each of the nodes in your ONTAP cluster is either going to have an SP, that's a service processor, or a BMC, that's a baseboard management controller. The SP and the BMC, what they are is a independent separate system that lives inside the controller that provides out of band remote management. So if you have a problem with your cluster, like say that you can't connect to the cluster management IP address, what you can do is try connecting to the SP or BMC to see what's going on, what the problem is. Okay, let's learn more in this lecture. The SP and BMC is basically the same thing. As I'm recording this, all of the current model AFF and FAST platforms have got a service processor apart from the AFF 7 A700S, which has got a BMC. And the SP or BMC, as I said in the intro there, is an independent system living inside each node in your cluster used for remote management. As long as one power supply is connected, so as long as it's got any kind of power, it's going to stay up and available even if main on tap is down because it's a separate system. So what kind of things would be used with the SP and the BMC? Well, it's used for remote management if you have a problem on the cluster and you can't connect to it with your normal way of doing so. So what kind of things you would want to do in that situation? Well, you can view environmental properties such as temperature, fan speeds and voltages. Maybe the system is crashed because it overheated. You'll be able to see that remotely using the SP or BMC because maybe the, the storage system is in a completely different city. You're not there right now. You can't connect it. You want to know what's going on. Other things you can do. You can reboot the system or connect to the ONTAP command line through the SP or BMC if the management IP address is unresponsive. So maybe you've got some kind of networking error on your main management network, if you've got a separate path to get to the SP or BMC, then you can connect to it and then you can get to the ONTAP command line from there. The SP or BMC can also shut down the controller if any of the environmental properties are outside limits. So if it is overheating, you don't want it to actually get to the point of melting something inside the controller. So the SP or BMC monitors those environmental properties. If it sees something that is getting out of limits, then it can shut the node down to prevent any long-term lasting damage. Okay, so as I said, in the A700S, it's got the BMC. So looking at the back of the A700S here, we can see that we've got the console port for management, we've got the E0M port for management over IP, and we've got a separate port for the BMC. So that's just on the A700S. All the other current models have got an SP, a service processor, rather than the BMC. And with the service processor, it doesn't have its own separate physical port. It's actually reached through the E0M port. So let's have a look at the architecture. So looking at the picture here, this is the controller and it's connected out to a physical management switch here. The physical management port, this is the port marked with a wrench, which is where your E0M port is. Now behind that physical port here, you've actually got a logical switch in software and the E0M port is connected to that and the service processor is also connected to it as well. So this is not a physical thing, this is just a, a virtual switch, and both the SP and the E0M port are connected to that same virtual switch, which then goes out to the real physical world using the same physical port, which is the E0M port. The service processor has also got connectivity to your console as well. Notice that it's also connected over to the console on the right-hand side here. Now, because the service processor and the E0M interface are both reached through the same physical port, it means that they have to be in the same IP subnet. So the service processor is a separate system, so it's going to have a different IP address, but because it's reached through the same port, in the same IP subnet. So you can see that in the example here, I've used 10.10.10.10, for my management port on E0M, I've used 10.10.10.11 as the IP address on the service processor. Okay, 
If you use the GUI tool, Guided Setup, to do the initial setup of the system, then you will set the IP address for the service processor as you're going through the wizard. If you're using the command line cluster setup wizard, though, that is not going to be done. So that's one of the things that you're going to want to do afterwards. It's really a post-installation task. The command to configure the IP address on your service processor is system node, service processor, network modify, and then dash node, cluster one, dash one. So you need to do this for each node. And then the address type, IPv4, enable true to turn the SP on, IP address, the IP address, netmask, the subnet mask, and then the gateway address as well. So it makes sure that you do configure an IP address on your service processor so that it's there and available for you when you do need it. Okay, once you've done that, you'll be able to access the service processor. Two ways that you can do that. You can SSH to that service processor IP address or when you're connected over the console, because the service processor is connected to that as well, you can press Control G. That will then take you to the command prompt for the service processor. The service processor is a separate system living inside the controller. So because it's a separate system, it's got its own separate command line as well. If you are in that command line through your console session, Control G to get in, Control D to get back out again. And to log in, a special username is used. That is NA root, which uses your normal admin password by default. Okay, so that was pretty much everything to tell you about the service processor for using it for remote management. There is another benefit you get with the service processor as well, which is hardware assisted failover. So with HA, let's say we've got our two controllers here that are an HA pair. Controller one has got its disks and controller two owns its disks. If controller one goes down, then what will happen is they've got the HA connection between the two nodes in an HA pair, and we're going to send each other keep alives over that HA connection. If there are several missed keep lives, so say for example that controller one fails, it will stop sending keep lives to controller two. After several missed keep alives, controller two will realize that controller one has gone down and it will take ownership of controller one's disks and start serving that data. Now, it's going to wait for several missed keep alives because a takeover event is a major event. It's going to cause disruption. We don't want to do that unless we really have to. So if maybe just one keep alive was dropped for some kind of temporary issue, it's not going to do the takeover. It's going to wait until it's absolutely sure that node one has gone down. So the good thing is this makes the system more stable, but a bad thing is it means that there's going to be a bit more of a delay before the takeover occurs. Well, hardware assisted failover can help with that. Let's say that controller one does have a problem and on tap crashes. Well, because the service processor is constantly monitoring the controller, it will see that ONTAP has gone down. And what it will do is it will immediately signal over to the second controller that controller one has failed and tell it to take over immediately. So it saves waiting for those missed keep lives. It just means that HA is going to take effect more quickly. Okay, that was everything about the service processor and the BMC. Thanks for watching. If you want to get hands-on practice with NetApp storage for free on your laptop, then you can download my free ebook, which you can see above my head right now. Also check out my NetApp storage complete course, which will teach you everything you could possibly want to know about ONTAP. Thanks.